Okay, welcome back everybody. Let's do another linear algebra example. So we want to solve the following system of linear equations using Gauss-Jordan elimination. So what we want to do is represent the system in an augmented matrix and then get it into reduced row echelon form using our elementary row operations. Okay, so if I write this in an augmented matrix, I've got the following. Remember this represents the coefficient matrix, right? So these numbers are coming from the coefficients here. So the first thing I would like is a pivot here. So let's swap the first two rows. So we're going to take row one and swap or interchange it with row two. That gives me a chance of having a leading one there. So that's going to give me two, six, minus six, minus two, minus four. And then it looks like zero, four, minus eight, zero, four and then two, seven, minus eight, zero, minus one. Okay, let's go ahead and take one half of the first row. I'm gonna get my leading one if I do that. Okay, so taking one half of the first row gives us the following. Let's see what we have here. So it looks like we have one, three, minus three, minus one, minus two, and then row two and row three, they're going to stay the same. Okay, so now I've got my leading one, my pivot right here in this position. I can use that pivot to get a zero right here. Remember, if I'm in reduced row echelon form, I would like all the other entries in the column other than the pivot to be zero. So that's my pivot. I would like all the other entries in the column to be zero. So that's not too bad. Let's just do, uh, just do minus two times row one, add it to row three, and that sum's gonna go ahead and replace row three. Okay, so the first row stays the same. Remember, it's row three that's changing. So row two also stays the same. And then for row three, we've got, this is going to be minus two plus two. This is going to be minus six plus seven. This is going to be six minus eight. This is going to be two plus zero. And this is going to be, looks like four minus one. Okay, so that seems pretty good. Okay, we add our pivot and then we cleared out all the entries underneath it. For the next row, let's go ahead and try and get a pivot right here. And we're going to do that by taking one fourth of row two. Okay, so if we do that again, row one's going to stay the same. It's row two that's changing. Okay, so one fourth of four is one. One fourth of minus eight is minus two. A fourth of zero, zero. And a fourth of four is one. And then again, row three is the same. No change there. Okay, great. So we've got our pivot, our leading one here for row two. And now we're going to use that to clear out this underneath. Let's get a zero underneath this pivot. Okay, so we're going to do negative row two plus row three. That sum is going to replace row three. And let's see what that looks like. So again, row one, that's the same, right? That's not changing. Row two is the same. Again, it's, it's row three that's changing. And here we go. So it looks like we've got zero plus zero, negative one plus one. This will be two minus two. This will be zero plus two. And this is going to be negative one plus three. So that seems pretty good. Okay, so I'm pretty happy. I've got a pivot here. I've got a pivot here. Let's go ahead and get a pivot here. So each of the rows will have a leading one. So I'm taking one half of row three.
Okay, so I've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. So that seems pretty nice now. So we can use this pivot, or this leading 1, to get all zeros for the other entries in the column. And then we can use this pivot to get all entries for the uh, all other entries in the column 0. Okay, so here we can just do row 3 plus row 1. That's going to give me a 0 here. Again, thinking about reduced row echelon form. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. Okay, so that's going to be 0 plus 1, 0 plus 3, 0 plus minus 3, and then 1 plus minus 1. So that's nice. And then we've got 1 plus minus 2, and then we said that row 2 is the same, and row 3 is also the same. Okay, so this pivot, we're all set. All the entries in the uh, column, the other entries are 0. Here, let's use this pivot to make sure all the other entries in the column are 0. So that just means I've got to take care of this. So let's do minus 3 times row 2. Add that to row 1, and that sum will replace row 1. Okay, so that's going to be 0 plus 1. That's going to be minus 3 plus 3. That's going to be 6 minus 3. That's going to be 0 plus 0. And that's going to be, it looks like, uh, minus 3 plus minus 1. Okay, just going to quickly double check that. 0 plus 1, that seems fine. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0, that's fine. That's going to be 6 minus 3, good. And then 0 plus 0. And then minus 3 plus minus 1. So that seems, that seems good. So now our matrix is in reduced row echelon form. We can talk about which columns are pivot columns and which correspond to free variables. Okay, so how am I determining the, the pivots? Of course, the leading one in each row, those correspond to pivot columns. So this row has a leading one, so that's a pivot column. This row has a leading one, so that's a pivot column. Okay, this row has a leading one, so that's a pivot column. And then this has no pivot, so it corresponds to a free variable. So notice I'm only labeling this in terms of our coefficient matrix. So now we remember that the, the non-pivot columns correspond to free variables. And again, if this corresponds to x1, x2, x3, x4, then x3 is free. Okay, so let's then talk about writing x1, 2, and x4. Let's get x4 out of the way. This says that x4 is equal to 1, so that turns out to be constant. So think about what this says, what this row says in terms of an equation. It says 1x2 minus 2x3 is equal to 1. So maybe I'll write that in scrap. So again, the second row says that 1x2 minus 2x3 is equal to 1. So I can just solve algebraically for x2. It looks like, uh, looks like x2 is equal to 1 plus 2x3. Okay, so for the first row, let's rewrite that. That says 1x1 plus 0x2 plus 3x3 plus 0x4 is equal to minus 4. And then I can just solve algebraically for x1. So x1 is equal to minus 4 minus 3x3. So my solutions look like this, but I can also write them in vector form. So in vector form, so as a column vector, we have the following.
and I could actually reduce this or rewrite this or break it up in the following way. So I could have one column matrix for all the constants, so minus 4, 1, 0, 1, plus x3 times minus 3, 2, 1, 0. So sometimes we write this, we call this parametric vector form. 